Okay. Well, hello, everyone. This is the anticipated video you have all been waiting three, three and a half years for, uh, sounds like. So, and that is the Chris Watts case. Um, I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk about why I don't want to discuss it. I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk about it, but maybe not in the way you think or you want to hear it. Okay. Um, it's complicated. It's very complicated. But before we get into that, let me just say welcome. Hello. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, hi, I'm Audrey. I'm a psychic medium. And when the Watts case happened, I was very much involved in it. I had a lot to say. I talked to the victims. It's very strange. But it's real. And that is one reason I was freaked out, as several of you have mentioned. And I'm going to go through your comments that you left in my community page. I posted a question up on my community page asking about the Chris Watts case. I just basically said, all right, all right, okay, 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 you guys, I hear you. You want to know about Chris Watts. Honestly, I can understand why some of you have questions, but then I honestly understand why some people are like, just stop it. Just stop it. Okay. I understand both sides. So I'm going to be kind of on the fence. I'm not leaning one way or another today on the case. I'm not Democrat or Republican or liberal on this case. I'm just going to talk. So I apologize if this isn't the kind of video you want. Um, I wouldn't consider this a true crime video. It's really going to be more about me explaining the process I went through and some of the things I saw and experienced as being a psychic and dealing with this case willingly. Okay, so um, for those of you who are newish, newer or brand new, welcome. Um, I, I came out of the psychic closet when I was in my early 40s. So um, a long time I was in the closet, a long, long time. I'm now 55. Um, and I'm very outward with my my gift and my talents. Um, I, I don't hide from it any longer. Okay, so this, this will be what it's going to be. Um, again, just hopefully you'll get something out of it. Not sure. Um, it might make me feel better if that matters to anybody. Um, by the way, um, my, my wreath right here, someone, um, in the comments and I'm not offended. I'm not offended at all. Um, I just wanted to explain my wreath. Um, they wrote that my wreath is really distracting cause it's unfinished. It's actually made to be like that. See, it's got the little lights, the back, the white part is, um, like a sweater fabric. It's textured with a kind of design on it. And then the green on the bottom with the lights. <laughs> it's it's finished. Good news and bad news. The, the good news is it's finished. The bad news is it's going to stay there. So I thought, oh, I'll turn the lights on. You can at least uh, see it nicer looking, I guess. Anyway, we're going to talk about something really, really serious. And... It is going to be about me. Some of it is going to be about me as a psychic medium. And um, a couple of you said that um, I got freaked out and I panicked or whatever. Uh, let me go to the actual comments that I was spooked. A couple of you said I was spooked and um, by the case. And I was. I was absolutely spooked by the case. And the reason is because... That was really the first murder case I had ever talked about where I was talking to the victim, the main victim, a lot. So I talked about the main mother victim of this murder case a lot. She came into my presence a lot. I conveyed that to you guys. She gave me lots of information. I conveyed that to you. Um, it became very, very over overwhelming when um, Spirit showing me these horrible things that happened to everyone who it happened to. I really... <clears throat> 
I was taken to the locations where these things happened. I was there. That's what happens when spirit takes me to a location. It may look like I'm in my body. Here comes spirit. <coughs> it may look like I'm here in my body, but I'm not just for a split of a second. You don't even notice it. Uh, I barely notice it. Um, it has to do with um, my, my, my spirit. Sorry, this is spirit. This happens whenever I come on and talk about spirit. Um, <clears throat> so I was taken to the, to the murders. I was taken over and over and over and over and over and over. And it's upsetting. It's upsetting for a lot of reasons. You know, one, it was a woman and two, there were, you know, three kids involved. Um, and it's an awful thing to see. It's nightmare worthy. It's therapy worthy. Um, I had never experienced anything like that. And the amount of evil that is involved in this case was beyond anything I had ever dealt with or felt or experienced before. It was like dealing directly with the devil. And I, in my opinion, there is no one single solitary devil, but it's more of an expression. I felt like I was dealing with whatever entity um, represents evil. The strongest version of that is what I felt like I was dealing with. And it was a lot, a lot of information. Plus, my life was falling apart at that time. Besides the Watts case, um, I had a lot going on. And I kind of talked about that in the first video back on my new channel. If you go back to my very first video on this channel where I talked about my life fell apart, I fell apart. I, I think I had a nervous breakdown. I'm not sure, but I, it was awful. It was awful. My kids left. My husband was stuck overseas. I mean, it was awful. And it was just too freaking much for me to handle. So I, I, I just, I dropped off the planet. I did. And I know that. And again, I apologize for that. I never wanted to do that. But it's like I could not breathe. I could not breathe anymore. And that's not a good thing. All right. So I'm going to go through and... Um, I don't know if I'll get to every single comment, um, but I'll, I'll do what I can here. All right. So this is American Jojo or Amer yeah, American Jojo 8871. I watched every video you presented back when this tragedy happened. It took a toll on many people. We just couldn't understand how or why Chris would go to the lengths he did. Will Chris ever tell the truth? Do you think? Do his parents know the truth? Are there accomplices? That's a lot, JoJo, girl. That's a, that's a lot of questions. Um, let me just go one at a time. Um, yes, this took a toll on the entire planet, if not the universe. Why would Chris go through the lengths of what he did? Because he's got something wrong in his brain. We see this. We see this isn't something new with men or women. Um, why would he go? Because he was enjoying the sex with his friend and um, no responsibility. You know, we, we know why he did it. And when you're being controlled by somebody, um, things don't have to make sense anymore. When someone's controlling your life, telling you what to do, how, when, what, why, where, how, uh, you just do it. This is something that um, strong people use against weak people. And I do consider Chris Watts to be a weak person, but not an excuse. Will Chris ever tell the truth? Does he even know the truth at this point? The man has lied so much. I think he doesn't even know what end is up. He doesn't know what's what. He doesn't remember. I think he's he's had to play these tricks in his own mind to live with himself. Do his, do his parents know the truth? Um, I, psychically, I, I don't think he's said anything to his parents about the truth. But I think the parents do realize the truth. 
and uh, accomplices. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So let me let me just explain this part to you. And I apologize. I have to have a Harry Potter example. Okay. <laughs> this is, think back to the Harry Potter book, the uh, Half-Blood Prince, towards the end of the book. Well, it actually starts in the beginning of the book. Um, it's time for someone to kill Dumbledore. Now, it had always um, been planned that in the end, Snape was going to have to do it. He didn't want to do it anymore. He agreed to it a long time ago. He didn't want to have to kill Dumbledore. So Draco Malfoy was recruited in to do the job and be accepted um, and, you know, have the mark on his arm and, and work for Dumble for uh, Voldemort. And so... Malfoy knows he's he has to kill Dumbledore. Otherwise, Voldemort's going to probably kill him. And uh, Draco's mom and aunt ask Snape to do the killing should Draco Malfoy fail. Should Draco Malfoy fail and not actually be able to kill Dumbledore, Snape will step in and do it himself. Now, Draco doesn't know this at the time. Uh, and the time comes, it's time to kill Dumbledore, and uh, Draco can't do it. Can't do it. He's too scared. So what happens? Someone else does it. So my point is the plan didn't go as planned, if you understand what I'm saying. The plan was for Chris to do it, but he couldn't do it. Okay. Um, Hannibal, uh, is that NK walking to the truck on the video? Yes. It is. I mean, you can tell, right, Hannah? It's her. I mean, it looks like her. We're not stupid. I'm not stupid. You're not stupid. It's her. You can tell it's her. I mean, how much? What do you need? It's. Do you need a, a sign? Do you want someone to? And I'm, I don't mean you, Hannah. Um, it's like some of. The, I'm getting hot flash. Some of these things are just so obvious, and for whatever reason, law enforcement doesn't want to see it. Why was there a crystal under Bella or Cece's bed? Did she drug Chris or do anything to influence? No. We want to find um, <clears throat> a reason that we can grasp to understand why Chris was involved and did what he did do. There's, there's, there's nothing that's going to make sense to us, but we keep asking, well, was there, you know, was he being threatened if he didn't, if he didn't do it was, you know, was his life going to be in trouble? Um, you know, how could he have done this? We're never going to understand. We don't think like that. We don't know crazy. You know, we may have our crazy moments, our crazy seasons in our life, but we don't have this kind of crazy. And I'm glad I don't have that kind of crazy because I don't want to ever feel like I had the power to do something like these people did. That's out of control. That's, that's something evil. So I don't know about I don't know about the stone under under the bed. Just want to know what really happened at Jana 7183. Um yeah, I got spooked. I got spooked. Because when I look when I look at certain pictures, it's like looking at the devil and um it doesn't take much to bring the devil in. 
the, the dark spirits. It doesn't take much because the dark spirits are always waiting in the wings, waiting, 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 waiting for us to slip up one time. They're going to jump in, jump into our lives, jump in around us and start creating havoc. And um, sorry, I'm just reading these. These are just so, I don't know. I feel like I remember saying the people who did do this, the person who did the actual murdering is never going to be caught and they haven't been and they won't. They won't. And it's not that I'm happy about it. It's because people get away with murder every day. Literally every day there are people getting away with murder. For why? Why? How? How does this happen? Well, what's happened is what's happened so many times over thousands of years. It's the buddy system. It's the government. It's friends in high places, friends in slum places, people who know people. People with money, people who owe favors. So no one else is going to go to jail for this case. And what I want to focus on was not, let's, let's try and not have something like this happen again. And of course it's going to, it happens every day. No one else is going to be punished. And that causes anger. It causes anger in you and it causes anger in me. But you have to be realistic. Once, generally speaking, one single person is not going to be able to take down someone who's committed murder, who got away with it. Do you know what I mean? Like this, this is serious. These are serious people. And I've told you time and time again, our loved ones don't want us to become the police. You may have enough passion to do research and find and look up and look out and, and try and figure things out on your own. And you may find something, but actually making it happen. A nobody like me, like you in this case, you know, we don't know anyone in this case. We don't know any of these people, these law enforcement, FBI. We don't know any of these people personally, okay? We have no power over these people. And, I, and I'm not saying to just give up. We shouldn't give up, but there's changes that need to be made. People need to be held accountable so this kind of garbage doesn't continue to happen. Things We don't want things brushed under the rug. Does any of this make sense? I just feel like, I don't know. I, I guess I don't. It's so clear to me. It's so clear to me what happened. And the future of this is so clear to me. And I feel like, am I just not explaining it right? Did I not do a good job explaining it before? Right now, I feel like I am just bumbling over my own words right now, honestly, you guys. So I apologize for that. Again, it's hard to believe that this one man, CW, caused all this, 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 I don't even have a word good enough for it in English. <laughs> I, havoc, chaos, um, disgust. There's a lot of adge adjectives that would go along with CW. None of his none of his friends or coworkers were involved. You know when. And I don't mean just in the Watts case, but I mean in any case, like let's say the Barry Morphew, Suzanne Morphew case, just for an example. Um, you know, when we find out about a murder so, or someone's missing, assumed to be dead, and we look at the husband, okay, who does he know? Who are his people? Who would help him? Who would cover for him? 
right? That's natural. It's a natural instinct. Um, natural place to go looking for answers is elsewhere in this the person's life. So if a woman's found dead, okay, it's the husband or boyfriend, okay. Um, who does that person know? Does the potential murderer have any affiliations with government or police or the mafia? Something. We start looking, right? We start looking around. Because it's so crazy. It's crazy that one person could do such damage. But it is. That is it. It's the one person and his relationship. Scott Peterson. There's so many cases. There was one murderer. There was just one murderer. Uh, oh, gosh. I'm sorry if I'm, I'm going to say this wrong. Your name at Zerinim. Z A R Y N M five nine three nine. Hello. <laughs> um, does NK keep in touch with Chris? Uh, I have put that question out there and I get blocked. And it's a kind of blocking that tells me no, she does not. She don't want to go to prison. She don't want to be locked up anywhere. Okay. She learned her lesson, so to speak. She knows what she got away with. So, no, she is not contacting, nor is she having anyone else contact CW. No. No, 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 no. And, yeah, I'm sure CW gets plenty of other letters and photos from other women, and maybe men. I don't know. Um, that girl, 81111, hello. Um, you would really like it if I could discuss the N Nicola Bully case here in the UK. There are many anomalies and new things have come out recently. Um, I think I talked about that one. Did I talk about that one even a little bit? If I don't feel right about a case, I kind of just let it go. Um, you know, if if someone's not coming forward with the kind of information I'm seeking, then there's really not much for me to talk about. But I think I did. Didn't I talk about Nicola? She was the one found in the water in, in England. I think so. Um, Drew's paranormal vlog. Hello, Drew. Um, is there a demon in that house? Or did it leave? Can you believe someone bought that house, the Watts house? I don't care if it was for free. I wouldn't want it. I don't want to go in there. It's not funny. I saw the new owners with their three kids. It's not funny at all. You know, this lady seems to think she's won the lottery or something by, by buying this house that the Watts family lived in. Obviously, she's not a believer in spirits. Um, I don't, I don't know why anyone would go into that house. I would not even step foot into that house. It's like I explained before, once negativity has owned a place, it's theirs permanently. You're not going to get rid of the negativity in that house. And that's terrifying negativity. I mean, this is for real. This, this stuff is for real. Demons and dark energy is a real thing. Even if you were to tear down that house and put a park or something, that energy is still going to be right there. That's why, for example, if they were to tear it down, uh, maybe put a memorial in a park bench or something, everyone who went there is going to start feeling very depressed. Again, it's like the Dementors in Harry Potter, okay? Listen. Listen to me. This is very elementary, okay? This is very easy to understand. In Harry Potter, when the Dementor is near you, 
it makes you feel like you're never going to be happy again. You're never going to be cheerful again. That's dark energy. It's the same thing. You can't be happy around dark energy. It's impossible. It's like saying, you, well, if, if you're up, then you, can you be down at the same time that you're up? You know, just, just stop. No, 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 no. That darkness will always be there because the darkness won. And we hate that. We hate that the darkness won. Lynn Marie Sheffield, 9398. Hello. Um, there's no closure. Sorry to blurt that out. There's no closure. There's no closure in murder. Just like I've always said, there's no justice in murder. There's no closure. Because we have a gap. We have a hole. We have a void where a human being used to be. And that human being used to carry their energy around in their vessel, their body, and be a part of, of the world. That's gone. It's a void. It's a literal void. It, how can you heal? How can you, how do you get over that? We don't. And I'm not trying to be a downer. I'm just telling you facts. There's no closure. What's the closure? Someone's in prison for it? That doesn't void out what happened. That doesn't that doesn't dig the dead people out of the grave. There's no closure. We simply adapt to the pain of living with the void and hole in our hearts for the rest of our life. Sorry. That's death. That's murder. That's natural death. But we have to go on. That's what I've always said is the good news. We can adapt and we can continue with our life knowing our loved ones are fine on the other side. I give you messages from the other side knowing that they're, 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 they're okay. Yes, that doesn't take away the gut-wrenching feeling and the, the air being sucked out of your body because you miss that person and you want to hug them. You just want to touch them and see them. You want to look them in the eyes. It's awful. It's awful. Even without murder, even just with no murder and just people dying of old age and stuff. It's hard. There's no closure. But there's a lot to look forward to. Because we will see our loved ones again, and it won't be in a place like this, which is basically, in my opinion, a living hell, honestly. Kathy Andrews says, I don't, I don't see a point in discussing the case. He did it. He's been convicted for life. Let the vi victims rest in peace. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it, Kathy. I hear, I hear where you're coming from. <clears throat> um, I kind of pre-told Shanann before I started uh, doing this and asking you guys for your questions on it. Um, I, I basically said to her, "Look, I'm going to be I'm going to be saying your name. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the case, um, but please don't feel like you need to come <laughs> and talk to me. Please don't feel like you need to be here for this. I know where you're at. I know every yeah. I know everything." where, you know, the girls are and, and Nico, I know all of that. Um, I'm just going to try and help a few people answer a couple questions, but please don't feel like you need to step away from where you're at and what you're doing to come in. I just don't want, I don't want to bother her. I just don't. Although she knows, she knows we're talking about her. She knows that every time you think of her or the kids, she knows, they know. <clears throat> I mean, things got crazy. Things got crazy. I was doing a live show and Drew from Drew's Paranormal sent me a picture. 
And it was a side by side of my face and Shanann's face. And I swear to God, it was like we were the same person. It was the strangest thing. Um, I know when I channel people, I do tend to look like them. I make the same mannerisms or uh, in their accent or whatever, facial expressions, whatever it is. I, t I, I do. I take on your loved one's mannerisms and stuff. Um, but this picture of Shanann and me together is so bizarre, but it's very telling. And it's, to me, it's an in my face saying, look, this is real. This is real shit. This isn't a joke. This, you know, this isn't Casper the friendly ghost. This is real people dying and, uh, me talking to them and getting responses from them. But it was freaking crazy crazy um at fire ice seven 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 three hello uh she says this post is like a wrapped gift for those of us who found you from the case and loved you since then it's a christmas gift to us i miss their energy but it lives on in those that loved them i still pray for the family you never disrespected anyone and weren't about the money you were just info yeah Loved watching you since then. You're very accurate, uh, scaringly accurate. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Fire Ice. Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be on here if I didn't think I was accurate or real. Like I've said before, putting oneself out on the internet, saying that you're a psychic medium is pretty ballsy. It's pretty, pretty ballsy. I mean, my own family doesn't believe in what I do. That's fine. They're not a part of my life anymore. I don't want whatever. It is what it is. Um, it trips me out sometimes, though, because it's like, oh, my God, I'm really, I do this. I really do this. I really do talk to these people and it freaks me out sometimes. Like if I'm talking to someone and I'm giving them spirit information, they're like, yes. Oh my God. And I'm like, really, really? Oh my God. Like I'm getting the chills right now. When people freak out, it freaks me out. It's like, oh shit, really? Oh my God. That really happened. Oh, I can hardly believe it myself. I can hardly believe it myself. It's just, it's cuckoo. Talking to it, talking to dead people. It's very strange. It's 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 strange in one way, but then it's stranger on a whole nother level when you start talking to people, giving them information about the dead people. That's that kicks it up a notch, let me tell you. So um yeah, so I you know, I really didn't give you any information on the Watts case here today. Um yeah, uh, Chris will be in jail for the rest of his life. Doesn't bring anybody back. It's not closure. It's not justice. Not justice. We need to change laws. We need to change things to put the fear of God, or maybe we need to put the fear of the devil into people's minds um, to stop them from doing things like this. When you've done something like this, in my opinion, you have pretty much given up your rights to live. You do something like this, you signed over your rights to the government, the government can execute you or let you live in a four by four cell for the rest of your life or throw you out in the ocean or on an island somewhere. I don't care. I don't have sympathy for murderers. And I'm not the kind of person that forgives automatic. No, I'm not into forgiveness. I'm not. And I know that's not normal for someone of my position to say. Um, but that's where I'm at. Why do I need to forgive? Why? Does it make me feel better? The deed is still done. Bad things have happened. The whole universe has changed because of that one deed. 
There's no forgiveness. Fuck you. I'm not forgiving you. For what? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And I hate that that's used against people. Oh, if you don't forgive, you're going to live such a hard... No, I'm not. I'm fine not forgiving people for what they've done to me or my family or friends. Mm. Keeps me safe. Keeps It reminds me how that person acts. Don't trust that person. It's a safety mechanism. No, say, I'm, I'm, no, mm -mm. no, <laughs> I, I can't say that enough. No. All right. So I basically didn't give you any information on Chris Watts, but uh, just a little insight on, um, yeah, why, I, again, why I left, how, how this case had something to do with me leaving. It was, it was a, it was a speck. Of, of something in addition to a bunch of other garbage I was going through in my life that um, caused me to feel like I needed to leave YouTube. But um, like I said, the people, the victims in this story are at peace and have moved on. They have moved on. So I'm happy for that. And um, yeah, that's basically it. So um, I think I'll be bringing Benjamin in soon. And uh, we'll talk to my son, Benjamin, see what he's been up to. And I'm excited. I'm excited about that. Okay, what's today? Is it only Monday? I'm exhausted already. It's only Monday. Okay. All right, you guys, take care. Thanks for watching, hanging out with me for the length of this video. And uh, I'll see you really soon. All right, take care. Ciao.